Yeah, very good. All right, uh, our next presentation is Innovative Contracting for Industry 4.0. This will be led by uh, Mohabed Shalan, Head of Technology of Agar Real Estate Development Company. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Uh, yeah, it's loading now. Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, so thank you very much actually for inviting me for this um, good conference actually, for the great conference. And here I will be talking about a unique environment, a unique thing about the innovative contracting and how we will handle uh, this kind to, to support the innovation and to support industry for in general. My name is Mohammed Shalan. I'm the head of technology for Aqarat and the digital transformation director for the BA Project Management Institute in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what we are, we'll be talking today about, about four uh, in the agenda, four items mainly. Uh, first thing is about the business dynamics. What have changed and why we are calling for new version of uh, contracting. Uh, then, uh, how, what are the problems that we have with the, the traditional contracting methodologies and how we are thinking of a new paradigm for 20, to make new contracts so that we can innovate and we can create a good ecosystem that will help us and support us in our mission for innovation and for uh, the new era and the new normal. The business dynamics that we are talking about actually that have changed our life recently, it started actually with technology, but also now it's increasing and increasing day by day. And we see this in COVID-19 19 actually. So first of all, we have new normal. Now we are talking in this environment, in this conference from different locations. So this is inviteable and a lot of changes have done, have been from uh, since COVID-19. The vertical diffusion. When we are talking about smart city, for example, usually uh, you will have a small number of contractors. You will have a project that will exit after some time. But when this project is transferred to a big project, so a smart city, for example, then you have to take about uh, to talk about uh, how you collaborate with a lot of vendors for a long time. There will be vendors working behind you and with you. Uh, for example, this digital twins, you will have something for it. You will have another contractor for IoT. How you will handle all these kind of contractors? So it's a lot of diffusion and a lot of integration that is there. Also, what we call is value their construction. Value the construction. Now we are trying actually to what everything to have value for the customers rather than we have modules rather rather than we have big systems or we have uh, bulk contracting now we are talking about how we will build a value for everyone the other th additionally actually we are talking about the gig workers workers now are being changed instead of having a full lifetime employee or being a full employee at a company now you are looking for skills and these skills are moving from one, one environment to another, from one company to another. So you have to be very, uh, very optimistic, actually, in how you are handling the contracts for it, all this stuff. The touch points. We have increased touch points between multiple uh, contractors, vendors, employees, stakeholders. So all these actually will need, they need to collaborate from different countries, different locations. So we have to manage this also in the contracts. For this, actually, we have created the concept of innovative contracting, which is elaborating since a few years, and we start hearing about it to control this environment. Some more things also that call for the innovative contracting is what's called, for example, the long tail products. Now, if you are operating a factory or you're operating a city or something like this, you have a lot of products from different vendors, and every vendor will have different items that you need to manage. So this will create an ecosystem for you, and this ecosystem needs to be managed well, integrated well, so that everything will, will talk to each other. And you have the, the, the value that we promise. The business silo diminishing, actually. Inside the organization itself, inside the organization, you'll find that um, you, have, don't, you don't have only finance and technology and sales. Everyone is start working with each other. And to make this, actually, you have to handle it and you have to manage the relation between all these guys. The business complexity. Now we are talking about, for example, the smart city, because this is my area actually. So when we are talking about it, we are talking about a lot of vendors who are doing a lot of value for us. So these vendors actually is complex now. The environment is not right. You have a land project that will you will finish in two, three years and you will quit. Now you are having 
uh, a city that you need to maintain for a few years with a lot of technologies changing and moving every time. And one more thing actually is the provider of stems. In case you have uh, some service from a powerhouse or a big company, they will dictate some rules actually on you. And you have to manage and to cater for this kind of situations. This actually what created for us, it creates an increased number of contracts, increased number of workers uh, that we need to manage and we need to handle. For this, uh, I'm, I'm showing actually the case of smart city. For this smart city, you have a lot of systems, a lot of workers, a lot of companies. So you need to handle such, such situation. It will be difficult without a kind of innovative contracting because you have multiple systems and multiple environments. This actually called us to transform the environment for contract management. Rather than change it or enhance it slightly, we are talking about transformation of the digital trans uh, transformation of the contracting methodology. Transforming transformation meaning that we are creating a new future for contracting rather than we are just changing a few things. This is exactly what as a snake when it change its uh, it's, it's, it's color, this is just a change. But we are talking about transformation. We are talking about a caterpillar that's moving to be uh, a new, a full caterpillar instead of a uh, uni adudo or something like this. So this is what we are trying to establish. And we need to establish this because technology is moving in very in exponentially. It's, move, it's moving very quickly. And we have to find a way so that to transform our contracts, we cannot wait until uh, contracting are, are changed slightly one by one. We need to transform, we need to make some efforts so that we transform it and move it from here. As you see, the public policy is sometimes not moving away again, uh, not moving with technology. So we have to make a kind of shift so that we can shift it and move it to technology and close the gap, of course. So in here, I have two quotes actually from well-known guys about this actually. The rule of law is going to be really interesting in the economy as economy is dramatically changed for these decades. So now the business is changing and the contracting as well will change. And of course, what will happen is that we will have technology and lawyers working together. And everyone maybe have seen, for example, IBM, uh, and their systems, Watson system, how you will get an advice for it. There's a lot of locations, a lot of systems now where you can get advice uh, on legal issues. So this is actually in both hand by hand, actually, you have to have multiple systems, lawyers, other business people working together to create a value. Usually what we have in the traditional contracting, it's just it was uh, just a document that we plan. Uh, we have one or two meetings, then we author this contract. We start negotiating the contract once it's approved. We put it in the file cabinet. Uh, we execute it and maybe uh, no one will see it actually after that. And then it will be in the file cabinet. We will start executing and we will have a lot of things. And there will be a kind of uh, contract management or change orders in case there are some changes other than this, um, it, it will stop. And usually we have uh, hundreds or thousands even of pages for the contract detailing a lot of things. It takes very long time to contract uh, and and for everything. And when in case there is any issue, you have to go back and read all this information. So this was the traditional contracting. And this actually traditional contracting, we have multiple issues actually. We have first of all, uh, the contracting was DTS work actually. And we were not able to manage the knowledge out of this contract because it's in papers or it's just archived somewhere. So it's not data, it's not data that we can use. The legal practitioners as well now should be changed because now when you are authoring a contract, you have to contract, you have, the B will need to understand a few concepts about innovation, about technology, so that these legal people actually can collaborate and get the value out of these uh, negotiations and contractings. The contractors themselves, now we have huge contractors working around us instead of two, three contractors as we did usually, in land projects or in development projects. Now we are talking about hundreds or even sometimes thousands of contractors because it will be easier for us to have contractors for every system so that we can innovate, we can change our mind, we can replace the contractor if he is not well forming for a certain area. 
So for this reason, actually, we are talking about a lot of contracting methodologies and a lot of contractors coming. The change management itself was a big hustle, actually, because in case you need to change something, then you have to go to the contract, you have to make change order. That was a big area. Now, in innovative contracting, this should be easy because actually it's, it's inviting actually to change anything while you are moving in a smart city that will operate for 20 or 30 years. So a lot of changes are coming all the along and everyone is expecting a change. So it will be easy to handle change and even if it's frequent or uh, not scheduled. The legal framework, actually, we have some frameworks that being mature now, maybe they still there need some time to mature enough, but like legal tech or regio tech or another uh, frameworks that will need to uh, have a lot of style and framework, how we contract and how we do uh, value. For this, actually, we have a lot of things that we need to uh, see for contracting. Uh, so in this paradigm that we are talking about and we are thinking about, we have the speed actually, the mono speed. Some contracts will move in uh, quick, some, some contracts will be slow as it because it's rigid or something like this. So you have to balance your contracting and your contracting speed every time. Also about the flexible scope. Usually when you are talking a smart city, for example, you are taking, talking that you can change anything during the project and you will plan for the for the item once it's coming. For example, in case I need some digital twins, then I will configure and procure these digital twins at some time and at some stage actually when I need them because I cannot uh, acquire them in, in advance before five or six years. Then after when, when I implement them, it will be of no value because the technology have changes. So there, is, will be, there will be a lot of changes. The multi-layer structure is actually because we have in here main contractors, subcontractors, third or fourth level contracting. So we'll have different contractors working in any project today. What we have is also the incremental deliverables. Because when you are talking about a smart city that will last for 20 or 30 years, then every time you have new deliverable and you have to manage this kind of deliverables. The change management, as I said, actually, it's invitable to have change and to handle it is very, in very easily uh, manner. The, the, the termination of the contract, we all know about Google Graveyard. They have product that will start, and in case it's not successful, they will kill it after some time. And this is the same. In case we have run into a contract and this contract is not giving the value that it should, then we are, everyone should ask for terminating the contract and it will be easy to terminate a contract. And this is what we are calling for. Similarly, actually, this invites a lot of new contracting styles that we will, uh, as for part of innovative contracting, what we call. Uh, one, one contract, which is known since a few years, maybe, is the value-based contracts. Value-based contracts is something used mainly in medical insurance. And in this medical insurance, actually, instead of you have uh, state of art hospitals and medicines and everything, then you, instead of this, and you are paying as a company a lot of co um, a lot of money for the insurance of your employees, then you can ask the, your employees actually to select some hospitals and some medications, and in this actually you will uh, save a lot of time as well as well as uh, the employee will get some benefits in this, uh, for, for this uh, decision so that everyone will be happy actually and a lot of companies actually in, when you are studying these cases have saved millions actually out of this uh, value-based contracting rather than just rigid contracting that's applied for everyone without motivations without changes uh, what's called what we call also the opportunity contracting opportunity contracting meaning that we have, when there is an opportunity actually, we will find an ecosystem, we will find different stakeholders or, or partners that will share the risk and will share also the value and will make an agreement. It will be a kind of vested agreement between them so that they create the value and make an opportunity this and to succeed. We have also the agile contracting. In agile contracting, this is used mainly in the software actually and this start to spread everywhere. And software actually, rather than you make an idea and uh, contract for the whole application, for example, you can contract step by step. Just you can contract for one sprint and then if it's succeeded, you can contract for another sprint or even you can change your way and think in different location or different direction if it is not successful. 
We are trying also all this actually so that we can reach into smart contracts where these are piece of code actually written in the computer that everyone will, for example, when you purchase something online, it will be wise actually to pay when you receive it at your home. So in this case, actually, in case we are employing a smart contract, it will be with, with code, it will be uh, without any human intervention. Once you receive the goods at your home, then you can click a button so that you pay for this uh, service. So this is actually what we are trying to do uh, in terms of this kind of contracting, innovative contracting. Additional types actually is like, for example, vested contract agreements. And vested agreements is that where two parties are sharing the risk. This is, for example, it was for Dell FedEx. They have a partnership so that both, item, both companies are working all together to deliver the items to, for their customers and to innovate technology. And at the same time, they are in a win-win situation. Anyone who will fail, the other will fail. So everyone will be in the same boat and they will be trying to have value. Similarly for pay for performance. Additionally for the contract for the employees, we are talking about social contracts. These social contracts actually is so that the employee will get a lot of benefits when he's working at achieving for his company rather than just getting a salary or direct salary or for his time that he's spending in the company. And this actually will be a win situation for the employee as well for the uh, employer, especially in the gig, work, gig working environment. Uh, one more thing actually is about innovative contracting is the open contracting. Now we are, we are, we have seen actually a lot of governments or organizations that they are putting everything related to contracting on uh, for public so that everyone can know about it and everyone is transparent and everyone can tell a lot of information what is going on so that we can add value and there is some governments and some organizations save a huge money actually out of this opening the information for everyone so that you can get the right value at the right uh, cost. Of course, now what we are talking about this kind of changes and motivations and a lot of things going on, it will need a robust tool set and a robust technology to support this kind of environments where we see a lot of dynamics, a lot of changes, a lot of flexibility. So in this actually, we have, uh, there's a lot of technologies and tool sets that will help us actually for part of, like contract lifecycle management. There's a huge systems now uh, for to manage the, the, the contracts from end to end and turn these into, into data so that you can get benefit out of it. Uh, we have some robot legal advice that you can get from multiple systems on the internet. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are paid. Uh, you have uh, to have a lot of agreements actually, uh, like NDAs and non-disclosure agreements, service level agreements and other agreements so that you can complete your uh, story and you complete your picture about contracting. You have to think about sandbox thinking. In sandbox thinking, thinking, you need to start sometimes for a small project so that you test it and see what is going on for this project before you continue uh, for next project. And our ultimate goal actually is to reach the smart contract, which is a code piece of code that's sitting in the computer and can achieve and can work by itself. This is, it, it will be achieved. We have smart contracts now for limited retailers, for limited activities, but it's still not there uh, as a full idea. Also, we are talking about collaboration. We need to enhance the relation between all the, part, the parties, actually, all the stakeholders working in a contract. And so that the, the document itself as a contract is moved instead of document to be a data that can be used by everyone. And also to move from the boundaries to pathways. So instead of contracts have um, uh, borders between every company and another, now we need to find a pathway so that we can all together work together. And the risk actually, instead of we are talking about risk uh, transfer from a company to another, we are talking now about how we generate value for ourselves as well for the others. When we 